Now, can I ask you a question? If you find out what we're really like, and that's the problem with small churches sometimes, because everybody knows everybody, and there's it's too tight sometimes, and it causes problems. Do you know what I'm talking about? I've had people say to me, say, Man, you know, you guys must be amazing that you're mostly family, and you can come to church and still not kill each other. That's that's a real miracle. You understand what I'm trying to say, though, right? See, you get real close and you find out what is true, whether you know it or not. We are human. You say, oh, I thought so and so was godly. Well, once in a while, godly people turn into humans. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I know that we're not natural, we're supernatural. Because we've been born again. We're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Even at the same time, because there's two natures, am I right? There's that old ugly nature down on the inside that wants to be everything that Jesus is not. And there's the new nature that wants to be everything the old nature is not. So how good and how pleasant, how beautiful it is when people can come together and listen to me without hypocrisy, love each other. What an amazing thing that is. And you know what, that, let me tell you a little something about unity. <clears throat> unity means oneness. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Those three agree. Everybody say agree, because I'm going to get on that word too. They agree in one. Now, I didn't say that we as a church can agree in one, in that magnitude. But let me ask you a question. How good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. You know what? We need to have a we need to have a focus. Let me explain myself. Why are you in church? Why do you come to church? Why are you here? Let me tell you why you should be here. You should be here to, for one purpose, and that is to exalt the name of Jesus, right? If you come to show off your beautiful hair, I'm sorry. Or if you've got wonderful shoes and clothes, that's good. But if that's all you came for, stay home. Let me tell you something. If you came, if you came because you thought people would be, well, so and so. You came because you thought it was the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do, but what are we coming for? We came to exalt the name of Jesus, period. Now, if you've got nice shoes and you wear a suit and tie, bless you, that's even better. That's good. And you know what? <clears throat> this is the key to this. Listen to me. And I don't want to preach on this yet, but it's like the precious ointment on the head. Even Aaron, it, it flows down over the beard, even Aaron's beard, and it flows down to where? To the skirt. In other words, it goes all the way to the floor. Now, I want to get on that later. But you can see the power. Listen to me. Just the fact that we can come and dwell together in unity, it produces an anointing, if you will. You, can you hear what I'm saying? There's an anointing that is produced in unity, in oneness. So when we come to church, listen to me, we need to come to church and say, I am coming. And man, when, when, you know, listen to me. We don't have a beautiful band. We don't have gorgeous people up here that are amazingly talented. But you know what? It's not about the music at that level. It's about your heart. Can you come and worship God or can you not? Can you worship God if nobody ever sang a note? Can you worship God if nobody ever strung a, you know, a, a note on the guitar? Can you do that? I remember when I used to come up here early in the morning and pray. I would never put on music. You know what I decided to do? I decided I don't want to play no music because I don't want that distraction. You say, well, that can't be a distraction, but it can be. Because I would put on music and pretty soon I'd walk around here and I'd be singing to the music. Which there's nothing wrong with that either. I'm saying, you know what we're practicing in our house? Just to kind of go against what I just said. We've been playing worship music in our houses. You know, all day long. Playing worship music all day long. Did you know it'll help you though in your house? It'll bring some peace that may not have been there otherwise. So we put on worship music and just let it play all day long. And you know, it's amazing. I've actually noticed it's amazing. It works. Even though we're still a family, and even though we still butt heads once in a while, it works. I mean, even though there's nothing wrong with being human. I mean, you, you, you just got to deal with issues in life. You have to do that. 
And when you get in closer, you're going to be, you're going to have to deal with them. That's why if we could just have a church with no people, we would have a perfect church. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. But it's not possible. It can't happen. But I'm going to tell you something. There's an anointing that is produced. Even the Bible describes it right here. When people can come together and they can genuinely, everybody say genuine. Without dissimulation, with no hypocrisy, reach right through everybody's humanity, just like Jesus did, and love them anyway. You, you understand what I'm saying? Because that takes, that takes the holy presence of God in us to do that. Because I, I'm not capable of that in my own. I can't do that. Because by nature, I'm going to pick out your fault. And I'm going to criticize you for it. As if I'm any better. Let me, let me explain myself. Do you know why people criticize somebody else? Because it makes them look better. And I'm going to tell you something. You don't look any better. Because people are smart enough to see through that and say, you know what, look at you. You're just like they are. You just, you just forgot something over here in your own life. And you know what, we've all been, everybody, everybody say everybody, has been guilty of criticism. But aren't you glad for Jesus and the blood of the Lamb? Because He forgives us and says, okay, let's start over. Let's go fresh now. And let's leave all of that trash at the dump. And let's not go digging up bones in people's lives because every person in here has got bones. And they've got a closet full of skeletons that they'd rather leave hanging. But, oh no, we've got we to gotta bring the skeleton out and shake it out and say, here, look here. This is so-and-so. <laughs> That's what the devil's charge is. His business is to accuse the brethren. That's not your business, it's his business. But see, when he accuses the brethren before Almighty God, he says, hold it, hold it, devil. I don't have none of this against these people. Why? Because they've been justified, they've been forgiven. And God says, devil, you're a liar. These people are perfect before me. They're forgiven. You've got nothing on these people. Can we not do the same thing for each other? Say, you know what, I know you've got faults. Everybody knows I have faults. Hey, listen, I apologize that I'm human. But we all got it. Some people have more faults that are more obvious than others. But you can't say you don't have any because you're a liar. Mm -hmm. We all got it. But you know, the love of God it gives us the ability. The ability. Everybody say the ability. Yeah. And it's got to be the Spirit of God. It's got to be the Spirit of God. Let me explain myself this way. You cannot legislate unity. Okay, y'all come up here. We're going to sign a piece of paper. You're a member of our church. Well, thank you. Does that mean anything? Not a thing. I know people that have membership in churches and they split wide open. You know why? Because it don't work. You know, how many of you know we got laws in America that are crazy, but it don't work? We got laws for everything, but they don't work. See, unity, oneness, is something that's got to be developed and brought forth by the Spirit of God Himself. Because if we don't, if we don't function on that level, we function on the other level, which is our humanity. And I'm going to tell you something. You put two humans together without the real Spirit of God working in their lives, and they're going to have a blow up. They're a wreck fixing to happen. Do you know that 